NVIDIA RTX 3090. A lot of articles, a lot of reviews, but after all, my fellow 3D artists and motion designers, I want to find out, is it worth the price for all the beautiful things we do? Let's talk about it. So I got myself an RTX 3090 MSI Supreme, Supreme X Edition as it's been a little while since I've upgraded my PC for 3D rendering and motion graphics production. And oh my, this card was a bit of a challenge to get online as these bad boys run out of stock quite quickly. Just so you know, this is going to be a completely unbiased and my honest opinion on the card. What makes it so special for CG production? One thing that stands out from many other GPUs I had before is its memory. It's 24 gigs of GDDR6X video memory. And as we all know, VRAM is quite crucial for GPU rendering. VRAM is the storage locator for textures and meshes. The more VRAM available, the faster complex scenes and complex textures can be rendered. Without further ado, let's finally open up this box and see what's inside. I am quite excited, I'm not gonna lie. Let's go! So straight away we can see a Supreme, Supreme... Why would they make such a strange name? Where is E on the end? But never mind, um, some metallic glossy type. There is an envelope with MSI logo, probably some instructions. Yeah, user's guide, instructions and promotions, nothing fancy. Black foam. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a mouse pad here. Let's see. It's not the best quality. I think the cloth will be peeled off around the edges after some time of use. Um, but still very nice touch from MSI. A metal stick. I guess this is for a GPU support. Anyway, the hero of the show. Come here, bad boy. Dang. And look at this. This is a beefy piece of hardware. Right, so that's how the side looks like. I think the top. The top is metal. Uh, overall, I quite like the design. It looks great and feels premium as well. Nevertheless, I think it's finally time to test this graphics card on Cinema 4D and Blender. I'll be using Redshift, Octane and uh, Cycles. And I'll be comparing this card with RTX 2080 Ti and GTX 1080 Ti. Okay, shall we? So the first test I did was in Cinema 4D using Octane Render and it was a little animation or should I say a simulation of soft candies clashing into each other. I did this test a little while ago, quite a few textures here, some subsurface scattering, particles attached to some mesh, also there is a little motion blur happening as well. I rendered 75 frames in Full HD. So for GTX 1080 Ti, it took 11 hours 27 minutes. For RTX 2080 Ti, it took 5 hours 24 minutes. And finally, for RTX 3090, it took 2 hours 16 minutes. As you can see, this comparison test took quite some time to render on each graphics card separately. So if you feel like you're getting any value out of this video, hit that like button and subscribe. This definitely motivates me to put up more videos like this. And now, on to the next one. Next shot I tested in Blender using project file done by Alex Trevino, using Cycles Render. I'm personally working mostly in Cinema 4D, hence I had to use somebody's project file with more details in mesh and texture. 
It's quite a complex scene and I rendered it in 4K. So I was expecting to have some waiting time with RTX 3090. And it managed to render this in 1 minute 16 seconds. RTX 2080 Ti rendered it in 2 minutes 22 seconds and GTX 1080 Ti rendered this shot in 5 minutes 18 seconds. And for my third experiment, I used Cinema 4D again, but using Redshift Render. I got this 3D model of a zombie head from an armor head store a while ago and quickly made up a completely random scene with this model and generated some hanging wires and used some weird colors because why not? This is just a rendering test. I've used substance scattering on this one and this proves to be a fairly heavy material to render without any noise. So timing wise, it took almost 9 minutes to render the shot in 4K using GTX 1080 Ti, 4 minutes 31 seconds on RTX 2080 Ti and 1 minute 49 seconds on RTX 3090. To summarize my experience with RTX 3090, I should say I'm quite impressed. No, I'm really impressed with the performance. Volumetric lighting, high resolution complex textures, VDBs, even motion blur got so much faster with this card. It seems like you don't need to chunk up all these graphic cards into your system with all the cooling to produce high quality renders fast. What I definitely would not recommend is getting RTX 2080 Ti at this point in time as the price is about the same as RTX 3090 but it is two times slower than RTX 3090. Of course, the card is quite expensive and it wasn't an easy decision to buy this card myself. Even after I took this decision, it was pretty hard to find and order this card online. As I mentioned before, these are running out of stock quickly. But listen, if you're somebody on a tighter budget, I would definitely recommend looking into 3080 or 3070. Especially if you're somebody who's starting out, getting 3090 would probably be an overkill. So I think it's about time to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to see more videos like this or maybe tutorials or breakdowns, or you simply want me to share my experience, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you later.